Three, two, one. I think it's time that we start the conversation to silence the shame. Silence the shame. Silence the shame. Silence, the shame. silence is the difference between treatment or pain, life or death. Silence the shame. Speak up now and silence. 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 Silence the shame. So welcome to the Silence the Shame podcast. My esteemed guests will be joining us today, Larry and Lo. Otherwise known as Lay Twins. Y'all give it up for Lay Twins. Born December 6, 1988, as I mentioned, professionally known as Lay Twins. They are French dancers, choreographers, producers, models, designers, and creative directors of their brand, Eleven Paris. Often referred to by their respective nicknames, Lil Beast and Cobblaze. Am I saying that right? All right. They are recognized internationally for their talents in new style hip hop, dancing, and various dance styles. They are identical twin brothers, and these are some handsome brothers, y'all. Give it up again. Yes, they look just alike. <laughs> Late twins have been featured dancers for various music artists, including one of my sheroes, Beyonce, Megan Trainer, Missy Elliott. Standing at six feet four inches tall, the brothers have modeled for French designers, uh, fashion designers Jean-Paul Gaultier, and appeared in many high-profile commercial advertising campaigns such as YSL, Chanel, Gucci, Prada, Versace, Jay-Z's Rockaware, Givenchy, and Beats by Dre. They have also worked for many shows before becoming celebrities. They also signed with the Jordan family, which is pretty impressive. And now you can add social impact leaders and mental health advocates to this impressive list of accomplishments. Let's give it up for Lay Twins. All right, I don't know if I should use the mic. I'm gonna use the mic, but yeah, my voice is pretty loud, but let me try it. I don't want to look like, like hey, her hey, in the beginning. It works. Oh, good job, guys. Yeah, I got us. You know, he got us. Uh, yeah, he got us. Yeah, you okay, good. Good, always, good. King always make me look good. I like it. Thank you so much. First meeting. Hey, guys. You good? Don't be like shy with us. It's like not the time to down. be shy, all right? Come no time to be shy. We're pretty seat. tall, so let's We're about to party, down. okay? Yeah. It's a day party. Yeah, it's a day party. Just be cool with us. Uh, you miss many things. Well, uh, please tell us what I miss. I'm I don't sorry. like to talk. It is. Such, I don't like you know, to talk so about me. Accomplishments, but you know. I like to tell. talk about him. <laughs> it's the same thing. Not really. You're Larry. Uh, thanks. <laughs> Thank you for that. Okay, Lo. Okay, Lauren. <laughs> no, no. Um, no, 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 no. Um, we've been saying many times uh, everywhere in the world, and mental health thing is like, it's like I'm sure a lot of people will recognize themselves in it. So many things we were so okay with in the past that we're not okay today, that we think it was normal to live like, and we don't realize that it's not till we see as a third person what's going on. So, yeah, my part of actually educating people because we started teaching at 11 years old. Wow. At, yeah, to universities, to schools, to dances in the street. And I wanted, I love to teach so much, but not just dancing, like how to be how to think, how to literally let and stop, let people in your perfect shape, mm -hmm. imagination of yourself infected. You know, like I don't like when people just give you the best way how to become a better person. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be your own director. So mm. I just- Wait, hold I, up, that's profound. Say that again. <laughs> so the you thing- You should be your own director. Yes, it's true. Of your so, own wellness, right? So I, I, I just hate the fact that um, since I'm baby and I and my mom always tell me your gift deserve money, but it's a way to speak, it's a way to think. It's not about literally physically money. It's like if I don't, if I like Muhammad Ali, obviously when he said, since baby, I know I was the greatest, and I always say I was the greatest. And when people was telling me I was the greatest, you think I was waiting for them to feel like it? This is exactly how I born like, 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 and I didn't have TV to see that, but it's exactly my words in French. <laughs> Say my way, like, damn, I see all of you guys in class and the social media was not as big as it is today, back in the day, but people were still trying to look like and put someone else's jacket to go at school. So I was like, why are you trying to be? I was like, have so many problems with closest friends that I thought was closest friends. Say so like, yo, that's not you. Like, just don't do that. 
you look cute yourself. Like don't try to don't try to look like anyone else because you saw X Y Z. Come on, look at me. Still today, no makeup. People call me asking me for my ID. I'm not 19. You know, I'm 35 this year, so I. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot he's 35 years uh, this year too. Uh, but, but, but yeah, but yeah, mental health in this cheese being a part of it, and uh, the way she introduced to us, it was my resume for Wikipedia. Yeah. But my real life is actually way more spicy than that. With all the. So we're gonna get into that. How about that? Go ahead. You ready? Uh, yes. All right. Not afraid so my of no questions. Oh, it would be painless. I promise. All right, so Larry and Lo, we've certainly seen the conversations increase since the pandemic with everyone, especially young adults and teens around mental health. What made you both want to contribute to the global mental health conversation? Because I know you've been doing this for a while, you've done a lot in Canada, so what made you guys want to do that? Uh, do it, it's true, it feels like we, we just touch a button and we're like, we're gonna do it bigger. Because we've been doing this for, Everyone saw. So I don't know if someone did take my class before, but I saw some people like like that before. Um, my class, uh, when I teach people how to dance, I teach them how to dance here. Because mm, the, the, be the best moment in life is when you take yourself to learn something you don't know and how to become the best dancer. You have to unlearn yourself to learn someone else. And this is mental health. So you have to, uh, you have to pull on the side the proud, your story, everything, and you literally collect the best of yourself to become the best dancer. And in everything, I'm talking about sports, I'm talking about uh, uh, family, I'm talking about relationship, because you men are the best for give up. You are the best for give up. So you don't like something, you change. You're not gonna try to, if a salad is not good, you're gonna throw it up, you're gonna do another salad. You're not gonna try to change. You know, if a plant, like how we are, I can ask a baby, anybody. If a plant, a beautiful flower, start to die, you're just gonna buy another one. It's easy, it's only $3. But someone that has a good mental, gonna be like, ah, you know what mother does? Ah, let me put the plant right in the front over there because probably it didn't have enough suns. Let me just put some less water. Let me change what is around it. No laptops, no phones. Talking to it. Talking to the flower is weird, but it works. And that will make the flower better. So it takes time, yes. But this mental health always win. Always win. So this button that we touch, uh, it, it came uh, from Ellen that came to see us uh, because uh, I don't know who was a fan of us, but uh, Ellen just came with her family. I think it was your son and someone else. And uh, they saw it, she saw the twins' uh, workshops, and she sat down, and she was just, as no words would come out from her mouth, she was just, I felt like I helped her to see better, because uh, she was always uh, doing it with writing, and I, don't, I think that nobody liked to write here. Yeah, we actually just uh, working, doing some, some project, or oh, it's like having a basketball team and never had the certain players to make the other player playing better. So she see us like the, the piece of the team missing. So and we just did what we have to do. Talk about our stories and show you what's real. I'm gonna show you later, actually, just to see. You know, I have to dance, but I will. I will just show you. Then it works on anybody. Cause some people think that mental health, mental health. I don't like this word. Mental health is for people that have a problem. No, baby. No, mental health works for exactly the people that don't have a problem before they come to a problem. So make sure that mental health it doesn't get to you. So looking at us with the doctor jacket because I don't like that I don't like the button up jacket it's, it's I don't like it okay make sure I said again I don't like it okay I, I, I can tell you why I don't like it but that's letter I don't like the blue jacket now we have a, such so many uh, English issues oh out here you understand like you guys are already you know English is very dumb I'm so sorry like I have to say so you know when I hear like mental health I'm like I feel like I have a problem fall in love like it's so dramatic. Rise in love. Like, it's like, <laughs> oh, I die for you. I leave for you. Like, <laughs> rest room. Rest room? Like, I just have so many problems with you guys. I have so many. <laughs> it's I don't okay. want to talk about it. Like, but anyway, just, this but is. You know, it's just cultural differences. I yeah. just don't like but it. But it happened, it happened last year in we French in my head. It, it doesn't make sense. So, I know, I'm some sorry. things from our perspective, you know, doesn't make sense. But, you know, know. It's, the good thing I will say, though, is 
mental health is, as I mentioned, how you think, act, and feel. So to your point, you're trying to teach us how to rise, right? And how we think, act, and feel. So, you know, it's language barriers, but we'll, we'll get through it. Oh, to, to go to what my brother said also, just to give you one example, I didn't expect to see any example out here, but we've been teaching since really young. And, um, how old? Uh, like, like I said, we started teach at 11. Oh, at 11, okay. And, um, and all the process worldwide, we've been helping just dancing, no words, because I wasn't speaking English. I just want to remind you guys, I speak English very late. Um, during my journey to actually become famous and dance and become the most famous dancer on YouTube, we, without know I was famous because I didn't have no phone, no computer. People was recording me in the street and put me on YouTube and got me famous. I didn't know I was famous. So I was just going doing every single dance battles and wanted to be seen. Our dream was to just be known. Like I just wanted people recognize, sorry. I wanted people recognize and be like, oh damn, yeah, I know those two twins. They're crazy, whatever. Like just that. Like I just want people to know my name. That's it. I didn't want to be famous. And so many people have been following me for years. They are not dancers. They're going through a certain different life, sickness, disease, or um, and this is in a large shape of form, which is family or violence or anything like. And they came to my workshop for the first time or just see me dancing live on, on YouTube or whatever and come to my class. It was just because we have guests always come and watch the workshop. She came and just watch it to see if it was, what she saw was real. And she saw how we built the mind of the dancers before dance. We make sure they dance the way they should. You guys are the best dancer in the world, eyes closed. And soon you open your eyes, you start to dance like everybody else. She realized it, she saw it. The next time I did, like, next, next time I did a workshop, she was in my workshop. Right now, today, asking when I'm doing a workshop, where she's at, front row. She's in the front on every single workshop and she's dancing. She never danced before. Give up is one thing on people, but when you don't, you're keeping yourself young and younger. I met you, you were older. I love it. Thank you for that. And I just think, you know, there's such, um, you know, artistry, but such a peace that I think comes over us, right? When we allow ourselves to just kind of let go. And, and that's what the beauty is about dance. And I love that you all are incorporating dance and wellness and rising of the mind. Yes, it's, like it's really a beautiful thing. So thank you. I want to go to you next, Helen. Can you tell us about um, the Kids Right Network and you know, why was it built? Yeah. Um, I think anybody who comes from an ethnic background knows that we are uh, probably raised in dysfunctional homes that um, can cause a lot of trauma. And that trauma can also relate into really bad decision-making processes. Not until I went back to school when I was 40 and studied the brain and studied neuroscience did understand how that was really impacting me. So decision-making processes are based on memories, and all your memories are something that you keep really hidden back in your brain. Those memories, unfortunately, will trigger certain emotions that today will impact what you are saying, what you are doing, who you are speaking to, how you're attacking them, and how you're being kind or unkind. And so we did this with so many different creative people that were occupational therapists, psychiatrists, psychologists, head of psychiatry, educators, principals, but most importantly, we did this with students. I started doing this with five-year-olds. Those five-year-olds helped the 12-year-olds. Those 12-year-olds helped the 15-year-olds. Today, those 18 and 19-year-olds are helping the 30 and 40-year-olds. So when I went to their workshop, and they'll never say, who they really are in the sense of they are so much more than dancers, so much more than dancers. To be able to tell a story with your body that has people in tears, that has people reflecting their own ability to look at themselves and say, wait a second, you know, I think I've got something that I've got to look at. You know, when I walked into their workshop uh, last year, last summer, I had brought my son there because he was going through a hard time. So I'm Greek and his father is black, so we call him a bleak. So he doesn't really fit in anywhere, <laughs> right? And he was having a lot of hard times. And that's where the whole thing, that's where the whole program started, was trying to figure out how am I going to help my son who is not Greek, not black, six foot seven, and really doesn't really fit anywhere, right? So I took him to the workshop to see the twins, thinking, you know, this is something that he could maybe, you know, get into. 
And I literally sat there with my mouth open the entire time because the Kids Right Network is all based on your story. So everything that you are and who you are is supposed to empower you, not hurt you. And I'm watching these two beautiful humans that are telling stories with their bodies and supporting these strangers in a crowd who are so engaged in all of it that I just went up to them and I said, you don't know who I am. I'm Helen. I have this program that we work to support mental health through arts. Do you think that we can work together and figure out how the six steps that we built can be something incorporated into the workshops? Because guys, do we like writing? No, we don't like writing. We like art. Illustrating is fun. Music is really great. But if you can get up and feel free with your body, and that's the one word that every single person always says when they've gone through the program and gone through the workshop with these guys is freedom. They feel freedom. And that's why we have named this tour Rise because exactly to Laurent's words, it's not about falling in or going down, it's about rising up. So we want everybody to rise and stand up and stand up for mental health and stand up for the kids who need the voices to be able to get them to stand up and help others stand up. I love that. And tell us a little bit also about the science of it and the new mold that combines all the four disciplines. Yeah, so I apparently developed new science. Um, I am a high school graduate. I never made it to school uh, in terms of other schools like college and university that you guys call a little differently here. So I went to grade 11 and went to work. I needed to run away from home. I needed to figure out how to make money and just leave the house because I couldn't deal with it. But apparently the way I was coping was something that is based on today a new scientific process. So when we were approached by McGill, we were asked to have the research done where these six steps would be done with writing to start. Because the other thing that's very important is literacy and text messaging has absolutely killed the ability to write properly, but you still need to write properly when you're doing different documents as you get older, right? So we started with writing, and that was fine because it was research, they had no choice. <laughs> but when push came to shove, we realized that there was a whole other population that we needed, which was the um, special needs. So we have the high functioning and the low functioning, so we needed to try to get them included in the whole thing. So we adapted the six steps to art. And that became really fun because it was art. You didn't have to write. You can just draw. Music was the other part of it where you can actually write music using the six steps, which is very therapeutic because you're also doing something for yourself because we know how much music touches others. And so today, what we are able to do with Lay Twins is turn what they're doing into an extended science. So we already have the science for the three disciplines, and now we've got the science that we're working on to collect the data and get them to become science and be able to have a valid, a validation that I don't think anybody would have thought would I, happen. I, I love that. Let's give it up for the Kids Right Network. <laughs> so tell me, um, Larry and Lo, how did you all you know, get connected. Is there more to the story of, of the connection? Yeah, yeah. I have a mom and she did she just decide to have another one. So I was like, fuck, I'm saying what's going on. No, you don't want to have a twin. Don't look at me like that. Oh no, you don't. You don't you don't. Kids are looking at you, looking at me. By yourself. You're so good. It's crazy. So um what was your question? <laughs> Because uh, I was about to talk to the kids. Is there a little bit more to the story on how you got connected to the Kids Right Network? Oh, kind of what drew uh, you it is, to it? It's a lalo. It's a lalo. How, like I said, we've been doing a bunch of meetings. Yeah. Guys, I hate meetings. I see you yawning the whole time. It's been the third time I've seen you I yawning. Love you're it. So cute, I love it. I live for no, this. Listen, listen, listen. I listen. saw you. You, you have to. Not even I caring. The whole process of what you I ate saw all your life now. But you know what's crazy is like. I love people yawn like like you. Like I this. always say with my teacher, it's because I'm learning. It's because I'm learning. You know, so you can I help. doubt you're learning now. But <laughs> when we go back with um with Kid Network. Um yes. Ellen, she is, you know, she was talking about the reading part and everything or whatever. Like when she's talking about it, now I understand why you are yawning. I was like, ah He's like, Oh, she's gonna give her book again. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go to school and say why why I was there for No, we're not gonna make you read. But we're gonna make you dance. With, with, in mine, mostly. 
not physically. I want you to understand uh, one thing, kids. It's so crazy. What I'm gonna say now is gonna reflect it for a long time because people older than you will understand, but you don't understand now. Everybody here in this room, older than you guys, see you bigger than yourself. Yeah. Am I right? All the yeah. time. Absolutely. It is. Yeah. Is that crazy? It's, it's crazy. To see even strangers know what you're capable of and not even yourself. So I decided to do I know you don't get I, it. I no, can no, see no, this. It's you fine. don't it's, get it. This is what I said. I already said it won't get it. Now. It hurts. It hurts. But it hurts to, uh, to actually just hear someone speak English and be like, but I don't understand. Your mind, you think it's like just words right now, but you still don't get it. But they However, will. no, they That's will. The they will yeah. regardless. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. And hopefully soon. Some people take day, weeks, months, never. Understand. But it's all about like if you actually just stop trying and do what is right for you, you are always going to get to where you want to be. And it's the life is that easy. And when I saw someone else, me, I'm just dancing. I'm just, you know, I've said that just to be humble. Huh? I'm just dancing and just trying to share the love that I have for life, for people who wants to quit on life. And hear someone else with a different English better than mine, <laughs> speaking to a certain people needs to hear about my words and believe in me as much as they believe in us. I'm like, girl, what are you doing? What I do to people, to me. So I was like, okay, maybe I should follow her because she actually really started to put some love into us mm. more than I ever wanted to be. And I've been dancing, I've been sharing stage with the biggest artist, stars, icon in the world. I'm talking about Dr. Dre, Jay-Z, Beyonce, representing and dance for Michael. I've been in entertainment for years with all the biggest artists you have in mind. All artists that you guys listen to, whatever want, they twins in their lives, but I'm loyal to people I love. It's the first time me doing mental health thing and share what I'm really good at. First time I feel like I'm actually just doing for the right cause. Mm. I'm done that you just doing something for people who have money. I wanna actually serve the people needing me the most, which is you guys. And I love kids more than anybody. I think that's worth an applause. Because so oftentimes, yeah. and you know, I have a career in entertainment. Oh, I used to have a career rather in, in the entertainment industry. And you so still have. And so often, thank you. Make some noise. She's coming from New York. She got a shit of words all the time. She, everybody, please. You already know. Don't do that. Thank you, Larry. Um, it, it just gets to be a point where you realize what you're doing is bigger than you right the money you know the fame i'm sure that you guys have received and, and being like the most you know popular dancers on youtube all of that is great but what it's about is is community and how we impact others and because we do have a mental health crisis i would say globally right not just in america not just in you know english culture is something that we're all having to deal with and so i just applaud you all for really wanting to take this on at this time because it's been really tough for so many people and for the the, the students that are here today again some of this stuff i know kind of sounds like all these big words but you know being able to have these dancers here and kind of break it down to you all really try to listen to what they're saying and and it, you said something profound that like strangers will 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 see so much potential in you and you don't get it and you won't understand it until later but just know that there are people that genuinely care that may not even know you right and the and the ability to open up and share is just so important and so profound can you tell me a little bit about um your connection you know why you were so interested as well in the kids right network larry well <clears throat> i don't want to be too much i want you to understand uh as fast than i than it happened to me when it Literally twitch in my mind. Uh, I used to not understand how I heal people with dance. You know what? I, I can literally put you here dancing. You're going to heal nobody. I don't know how it happens. I got scared many times when they came to come up to me and be like, I had a cancer and you get me through it with your story and dance. I'm like, I don't believe you. I'm like, thank you, but it's like, and the kids come, it's like my mom was in a bad, bad space, and I show her a video, she's for her to come down, and it works. 
lie, lie. I'm trying to lie. I, tr- I lied to myself. I'm trying to not believe in it all that. Doctors came over and show us uh, the hospital, and it's a whole room. Then people, when they don't feel good, they just play the video of Lit Twins, and they calm down. No, he said. And I'm he like, said, okay. When the when the client Dr. comes and waiting at the at the wa- in the waiting room and watch the video of Lit Twins, and finally come in front of me, so okay, what's going on today? It's like they forget. Yeah, it's sometimes okay. yeah. And it's it's just it's just. Like she, like she said, it was it was a power that I don't control, cause I don't call that dance. I call that feelings. Sometimes you're gonna think that it's about the music or it's about the the movement. I promise you, it's even bigger than that. I want to I want you to feel it, and I think it's better than I show you with someone that don't dance. So can I have anybody that don't know how to dance? I know if you don't know how to dance, you don't want to say it to the community you don't know how to dance. But if you don't want to do it, I literally know. Who does not know how to dance? Oh, Larry, it's so I mean, rude. I don't want to be rude, but so rude. I, I, work, I work with Buddy. You, like, you don't know how to dance for sure. Come over here. For oh sure. My God. Like, I know by, I know, do I know by faces, yeah, guys just want to disappear. Yeah, I, I know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Larry, you look at me straight in my do, eye. You definitely don't dance. Stand up, please. Yeah, stand up. Don't co- No, I know you, daughter. Just stand up. You look so great. Come. Oh, yes. Come with me. Come with me. <laughs> Come here. See, when I say it's rude, see, I'm like, why would you I, do that? I, listen, we all the love that I have, you know. Hey, Larry, I would say a basketball player doesn't know how to move either. Yeah. Come over here. He Woo, barely know now. how. He barely know how to walk. Come on, man. He's like walking different. <laughs> oh, stretching. <laughs> this is great. Can you just sit down here in front of us? Just the time I get ready with what I want. Yeah, be comfortable. Okay, so um, it's that easy. I'm just gonna ask the room, and this is what we like to do, and please just respect the time that we're doing with him right now. Um, I'm gonna ask just you to close your eyes and let it close, don't cheat. And I'm gonna ask the whole crowd to just silence and nobody talk, to respect just the fact that he's have his eyes closed. Why? Because if you guys speak, he's gonna realize he's not by himself. So let's keep it quiet and let his eyes closed. I want you to just think about yourself. I know it's something and it actually, because um, you're a grown man, so it's, it's th- those words are not like kids, you're definitely gonna understand. But to project yourself will be a different, different work for you. I want you to make it work right now. You have a family, beautiful family, matter of fact, that I actually know right now. Um, I want you to right now think about yourself, what, how far you came from to have the life you had today, what you still needed, you're still dreaming, you still believe in a lot of things, you're still working so much to get your kids to a certain point for them to understand what you lived to make sure they don't do the same mistakes that we did in the past. And also you have your own personal issues, then you feel like, and this is how men grow in life. Men always go away from people we love to fix their own problem in their self. This is what a real man is. He doesn't want to take everybody in. He wants to fix it by himself and leave. You have your own issue that nobody knows, only you. I want you to just pull this in your mind and I want your body reflecting right now, physically, little by little, we're gonna be with you. We're not asking you to perform. I just want you to follow exactly my lead. Eyes closed, don't worry. We're together. So um, it's uncomfortable. Mostly people shake or laugh. We just have one of the two. Um, just follow us, it's so easy. And it's not about dance, believe me.
imagine oh this gosh. is five minutes. Imagine what happens after the workshop. Yes. Give it up. Woo! This is awesome. I didn't even, because I want to speak louder. This right here, do you know how long it took for me like this? Right. Mm. You need to trust, first of all, the person that touched you. A touch is really important, mm -hmm. okay? This is what I figured through my life, eyes closed. Some people don't know, but I can literally dance for you, make you feel the way just because I know what you see. I can represent you better than you represent yourself. You just tell me a story. He didn't have to tell me anything. Do you think that his mental is good? I think he's good, but I know what he's scared about now. Right. I know just the way you move, I know what you but care that's about. That's the beauty, that's the beauty, that's of, the beauty of, of it, that's the beauty of it, about the fact that every single people here in this room have their own thoughts about what he's actually going through, just physically. Like if you go through speak. something, it's because you're scared to show something, you're scared to show something, because you don't want nobody to know your weakness. So if you protect your weakness, you become dangerous for everyone. I cannot love everybody. I will be my own enemy. I can only share and wait for you to give it to me if you want it. If you want to give it something something to me, help the one close to you. The one that I'm not focused, it's okay too. Like if you, you see uh, in the class that you see someone that disturbed the class, just wait. Just wait. It's okay. The only thing I'm asked is stay focused. The one that are not focused, just try to don't disturb the one that are focused. That's all. You can be in your own space, unfocused, it's okay. But the one that are focused says you, it looks like this to me. Look, I'm trying myself. Me, it's, it looks like this. As close as I open, it's the same, because I know myself. I see myself in the third way. Every time. Every time. 360. This is me. And I'm not even dancing.
I'll give it up for Larry. I, I just, I just want to say something. Um, wow. There was so much power in what he just did. And I think each one of us, right, could have closed our eyes and gone through a lot of the struggles and different things, whether you're a student, you're nervous about school starting, or you have a tryout, right, for football or baseball or, or cheering, or, or you're a, a parent who's worried about your kid going off to school or having to go to school and so many things happening right now in this world or global warming. Like, I just felt so much pain, but I felt this really, really gentle peace and freedom in the movements. And right, and so that's the one thing about letting go of the pain, letting go of the fear. That's what we deal with as it relates to mental health, right? Challenges and things that we go through in life and not having healthy ways to cope and just the freedom of expression through dance, uh, Larry and Lo. It's so beautiful of what you all are doing and, and I honor you all today and I just thank you for what you're sharing with us. Because it is a different way of thinking about it and a different way of looking at healthy ways to cope. And so I, I want to go to Helen really quickly and just, and I saw you rising at the end and I just kept thinking about the rise of the mental health tour and what you were doing and it was just so profound. Helen, can you share a little bit about what you all did in Canada and now what the plans are for the US? I have to say, I saw some of you in the audience getting emotional. I see you, I saw you and I think I get emotional every single time. But imagine what you just saw was three minutes. Imagine what happens after you've gone through the entire process and you've gone through the workshop, what that looks like. It literally changes you and there are no other humans that we would ever be doing this with except Lay Twins. So please, once again, give a really, 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 really big. I, I teach him everything, you know. I really teach him everything. I'm a, I'm a good coach. I, uh, everybody knows I'm a Pisces. I'm very emotional. Um, but I lost my sister and my mother. I'm not going to put you on the spot, Chloe, but Chloe's mother was my best friend uh, four years ago. And just through your dance, there was so much peace with the grief I'm still going through. And I just thank you for that because there is such power in movement and expression and allowing people to, you know, to, to express themselves. So yes, I appreciate boy. that. Yes, boy. And yes, my niece, Chloe, is a dancer too. And I just know that man. she heals through her dance and expression. And I just, I love everything that you all represent. Um, yes, ma'am, if I can yeah. teach you, I can't forgive you back. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, I can go home now. Oh, no, no. <laughs> but that was really special though, thank you. Did you want to add anything, Helen? So uh, the reason why they can do what they do and they run and have the energy that they do is that they don't smoke, they never, don't drink, never, never. and they don't do drugs. No, never. All the no. shit that they go through. But look, 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 look. <laughs> raw. It's all raw. All look, raw. The, they are the example. The tentations, the tentations is everywhere. Everybody is tent. Of course, my mom did a great thing. Great, great things in the world. She served me. She's like, do it. Oh yeah, she. Oh, she Are pulled it right there. She's like, like, just do it. Smoke, smoke, drink, touch fire. I Go just want to see it. Just no. do it. When um, I'm Caribbean, 
Oh, my mom, she's Caribbean, 100%. So when Madame Guadeloupe, Miss Guadeloupe, you know, Mrs. Borges that make the twins, think about us and one buddy woman that make us, okay? She, that she, we have 18 brothers and sisters, nine, wow. nine brothers, eight sisters, mm -hmm. right? Wow. Yes, no, no, wait, that's nothing. We're the youngest. So when we arrived, it was already there, okay? You know, <laughs> we were not like in the middle. We was the last one, okay? She did a part of the dad and the mom. I'm not gonna talk about this because this, I'm still very emotional about it. And, and this is what I said to all the people. Um, why are we helping the kids? Because you see what I just said? Mm. I still have mental issues. It's not gonna help. Like, it's, I, I still need to keep dance every day mm. to make me feel better because when I help someone, it helped me also because I teach something. We like the doctor with the fake teeth. We like, don't do this. It's good. You have beautiful teeth. Don't do that. Don't do this. And we like, <laughs> we all teeth. It's exactly like <laughs> the same thing. I fix you, but you fix me in the same time. I can't. It's things I cannot speak about because in America, you say a, a word like, uh, don't beat the horse when it's dead, something like that. <laughs> so dramatic. That's so dramatic. Oh my god. Oh, anyway, I prefer you forget about this one. It's so I have the picture of it. I'm like, who yeah, do we, we that? Picturealize everything. I mean, anyway, uh, I don't have that. In France, would you say something that 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 works with this one? It's it's probably hard to translate, but we say, it's do it's not French. No, do not hit a kid when he's already crying. Mm. This is a, is is very little. But My if you mom think is the other way around. But think, <laughs> lower stop. But no, if you man. think, no, but let me speak. If you, gosh. Are you crying? If <laughs> you want me to give you a reason to cry? <laughs> huh? No, 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 seriously. Like, if you think about it, all of us, like all of us, is moment that we won't forget in life because we was already so down, we couldn't believe that that still happened to us after this. Yeah, absolutely. So this is, this handicap can literally not happen to them because we don't want them to think wrong. And we're so different. Sometimes we want to raise our kids and be like, hey, it's this directions. I know you, okay, why you want to go this way? But you know what's gonna happen. Then why you want to go? I know you gotta learn from yourself, but you gotta take this way, I'm telling you. All right, just get hit and come back, I got you. We need to let them go down. Yeah, we need to actually let them do it. Like Sometimes mental health is not for tell you good directions. You gotta go down at least 10,000 well, times. Life is a bad experience. Life yes. is a bad experience. And my yes. daughter's did something like also oh. like, no, 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 well, no, no, it's, it's, you know what? You know, you know what? You can leave. We have the best of the two. <laughs> so uh, the thing is like my daughter says one thing about she just got to the high school first time. So she, 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 she's on the high school, college. It's a college? It's, it's high school for them. High school for them. Okay. Yeah. So she went to high school and, and she see, you know, she's the youngest one of the four different years is ages. Mm -hmm. And but my daughter, she obviously is amazingly beautiful and tall like me. So she's taller, like taller than most everybody at school. Mm -hmm. And so people are looking at her, guys, she's just 12. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, she, I raised her right. She is so, so grown and so mature. And so she's not curious at all. So I love her for that. And she came out of me or whatever. I always take news and anything, whatever, FaceTime every day. And she's like, and she said, um, and she said, she said, I saw her confused. I said, what's going on? I said, oh my God, I just, it just like people, people trying to make me smoke today. And I was like, excuse me? Say, like, and I realized our, our ages right now, like our, um, this year is like, no. It's the age when people try stuff. Sadly, that early. Um, and I'm like, um, okay. And what you did? It. She's like, I, no, 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 I didn't smoke. I swear, I promise you. No, you didn't swear. I know, I, oh, I got you. I mean, it's fine. She's like, yeah. Um, and she didn't know what to say. I said, all right, can you make a promise with me? And she's 12. And I'm her father. So I was like, dad never smoked, never drink, never smoke. Can you promise me if one day you want to try, it has to be together? And she said, really? I said, please promise me if you want to, if you want to smoke, we have to do our first time together. That would be so cool. And she said, okay. She never tried. So the she one never, thing I will say is I love the fact that 
it's about modeling behavior, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's the important thing. And, and I want to applaud you all again for not drinking and, and not smoking. And I'm not, you know, the social police, but I think our kids need to see other people in that light. And that's, you know, we can relate all that back from a mental health perspective, how we think, how we act, and how we feel. So I think the, the moral to the story is modeling behavior. And I love yeah. what you all have It's, it's doing. more about like, I already have a plan when I'm going to do it for the first time with her. I'm going to act like I'm dying. She's like, no, 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 I'm killing that. And after that, she's not going to touch again. Absolutely. <laughs> all right, what? So I do have one last question for you all, though, because I want to save time for the demonstration. Um, Listen, I have to ask this question. I'm sorry, I do have to ask this question. You all started working with Beyonce many years ago, and, and I actually had the, the great fortune of meeting Beyonce when she was in a group called The Dolls, even before Destiny's Child, and I was at Columbia Records when she launched her solo career. I mean, she is our queen bee, right? She is the epitome of excellence and talent, and what has it been like just working with her over the years? I, I just. Listen, I love her. I love her so much. I did. I did. I talk to her in my heart and my pray and everything. So I don't really speak about her, and especially because um, she showed enough so much love on stage for the twins, and we represent her. That's it. The only and words. I don't mean personal. I and I don't mean personal. Yeah, no, no. She, like she's working. She, like I did so before, because it's the same person that I'm working today with. Yeah. Um, I never seen someone work more than me. Never in my life. I, I think my, me and my brother, we are a hardest worker when it's actually our buddy are dead. I think the whole conversation we had behind the doors was, guys, do you have ice? Do you guys, uh, do you have physio? Do you guys, we just keep ask people, even you, if you can help us and our buddies, because this is our only day off. And my only day off I'm doing with you, because this is my dream. Like we said, you don't understand probably because you're like, why the dream? The guys has been like, go everywhere, do a battle, Hennessy's country. I do a lot of things, yes, this is, my dream, like my brother said, is the only time that I can make Beyonce be super jealous. <laughs> Beyonce, she's literally would dream, would do everything to be in our place right now and sharing like moment with people that really love her. Yeah. But she can't because you know she's big. So she's always said like, give them love. You're so lucky. If I can go out and see them, this is what I'm leaving right now. So I'm leaving something that she never did. So that's why I'm here. So, yeah. Thank you for that. I love that. Yes, let's give it up. All right. So that, that ends it for my questions um, for the, the Silence Chain podcast. Again, I'm so grateful to you, Helen, to Kamiko and the team, um, to our staff at Silence to Shame, and, and the important work, more importantly, that you all are doing as Lay Twins. And so we want to give you a chance to kind of share a little bit with our audience about what you want to do in the workshop or if you want to do any movement or anything. Um, Can we just say thank you to Shanti and Silence the Shame, yeah. please? Thank you. Me, I have one last thing to say. Yeah. Uh-oh. I did it. Get ready. Three, two, one. I think it's time that we start the conversation to silence the shame. Silence the shame. Si silence the shame. Silence is the difference between treatment or pain, life or death. Silence the shame. Speak up now and silence. 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 Silence the shame.